My name is Jim Mason, and I'm going to tell you about the seed calculator here that, that we developed, at, uh, that I helped develop with the Tallgrass Prairie <coughs> Center. And I'm really excited to be here today. And you want to know why? Yes. Because I'm really, I've been obsessed with birds. You might be able to figure it out looking at my title slide there. You're going to see birds there. And I was involved in a project here at UNI several years ago where we actually built some of these things, <coughs> prairies, plantings. Uh, with forbs and grasses and stuff like that. And we found out, it actually suggested that if you build it, they will come. And so the more you guys use this tool, the more I'm going to get to see more of what I like to see. So that's why I'm pretty excited about being here and being able to tell you about this. Because it's really a pretty cool project. It, it essentially codifies over 25 years of experience and applied research like Laura was telling us about. Um, and it puts it at your fingertips, basically. Um, so that, that, that's one reason I'm up in the front of the room, I guess, is I, I, this, this stuff kind of excites me. Basically, what I'm going to be doing is giving you a little bit of an overview of this tool that we've got available online. And it's kind of in beta testing right now. We're trying to get all the kinks out of it. But it's, uh, we've been working on it now for well over a year. And it's, and it's working pretty good, I think. And so uh, essentially, I'm going to take you on a little bit of an overview of the things you're going to see um, with that tool first. And then what we'll do is we'll sit down and run a little project with it. I'll jump out of the presentation and, and just, just run, it, run you through it. So I just want to give you an overview first. Um, at the top of every page on this website is a navigation bar. It's kind of hard for you guys to see it up here. But essentially, um, this just provides you with a little background on how this calculator was developed in the first place. The, the methods that we use, for example, for species selection. How do we decide what species are appropriate where? Um, and seeding rates. How do, we, how do we tweak seeding rates? And uh, the, the calculator will provide you with a predefined custom seed mix, but also give you the option of being able to add species that are appropriate to the parameters of your planting site. And this will help you determine how to tweak those values. If you take a look at some of the some of, the, some of the things there. Or for example, the bid letting screen that will um, just give you a little bit of input on how to work with the vendors when you're trying to buy your seed and what kind of things you might expect and what kind of things might happen. Or nurse crops, why do we do nurse crops? A little bit of talk about that. But most of what I'm going to be talking about really with you here today is the calculator itself. And you would get there just by clicking on the calculator link. And when I do that, Basically, what it will do is it will take me to an input screen where I can specify the parameters of my site. Um, it will give me the chance to specify a project name that will be used when you're, for your email communications or when you're uh, generating a printable bid sheet. It gives you a chance to specify the soil moisture for your site, uh, whether you're planting it in the spring or fall, because that will ha have some influence on the seeding rates of some of the species that are included in your mix. Um, it will also provide you with the ability to specify the area. How big is the area you're planting? And either acres or length and width by feet. What county you're planting it in, because some of these species are actually restricted and we don't really want to encourage planting species uh, that aren't, weren't native to the area to start with. And then one of the ones that I find the most exciting is the ability to include optional species. Like I said, this thing will generate a custom seed mix uh, based on the parameters you specify. But if you choose the option to include optional species, what it'll do is it'll include all the species from over 160 of them that are included in this database that match the parameters that you specify. And that what, what's so exciting about that to me is because I'm really into diversity in life, and I would be doing that. I would be adding, I want to add a little bit of this, add a little bit of that. But I wouldn't know if I was adding something that was going to be dead on arrival or not without a tool like this, because it'll only include the ones that are appropriate for your site. Um, and basically, uh, throughout the site, you, you might see these little help icons. And if you click on one of those, it'll give you a little window that'll pop up that'll explain that in a little bit more detail. So if you find a certain piece confusing, um, you can get a little more information there. And if you just click on the help icon again, it will collapse that. Um, so once I've specified my input parameters for my site, I click the Calculate button. 
and that will then lead to a custom seed mix page. And the remainder of my presentation is ba basically, I'm trying to break that down a little bit uh, and working you through it. Uh, and the first things you see at the top is in a, a step one, which just reiterates your parameters to you and then gives you a chance. If, if you see something wrong there, it will give you a chance to go back and tweak your inputs a little bit. So go back to that screen we were at before. Um, if, if everything looks good there, at step two, it gives you an overview or a, a summary of what was generated. It tells you how many species and what the cost range would be for that. And if you're just trying to generate it and, and run and go, and you're all ready to, uh, to submit that, there's a little link there that will scroll you down below step three, which is what I'm gonna talk about next, where you can just go ahead and submit the bid to vendors or, or generate a printable bid sheet for that, for that project. Um, if you actually want to tweak it a little bit, scroll down a little further, and you're gonna see at step three, a table. And in that table, um, it's broken down by guilds. Here I just, I'm just showing the Legumes Guild. There's a Grasses Guild above that and a Forbes Guild down below that. And with each guild, you can adjust the seeding rates either by clicking in one of the edit boxes, the edit box for the species you wanna tweak, and making your adjustment, you need to press your enter key, which will automatically go recalculate that page and scroll you back there. Or you could click on the recalculate button. And one of the things you'll learn if you look at um, like the seeding rates, um, <coughs> uh, subsection menu item that we had up there, is that these things are kind of balanced so that we've got, like, like Laura was indicating, so we've got the right number of grasses to, to forbs and legumes. And um, so if you get a little confused and, and you think you might be getting out of balance, you can, for any guild, just reset that guild and leave your other guilds alone. So as you're working forward, you can get your grasses the way you want, you get your legumes the way you want them. And then um, once, once you get that all taken care of, you can go to the next step. But one thing I wanted to point out here quick is you can see some species here um, where uh, zero is listed as the seeding rate. Basically, if that's showing up, you know that I had to include optional species specified. So these are species that match the input criteria that I had, but aren't really included as part of the mix without you actually going in and adding them by entering a seeding rate there. It, when you're all happy with that, when you scroll down then to the bottom of that table that you see after the Forbes are listed, then it just gives you the grand total and then gives us the ability to submit to vendors. Now this is still, like I said, it's a little bit in beta, so it doesn't actually submit to vendors at this point in time, um, but it is active in the sense that it does submit. And we'll take a look at that. If you click on that button, it basically takes you to a screen where you can enter your contact information and then adjust or add to the message that is being sent to, will be sent to the vendors. But actually at this point in time, it just sends it to your email. Uh, when you click the submit button. Well, we don't have it submitting to vendors yet, but you could, right? So as this email gets sent to you, you can look it over and step four, we'll see in a little bit, gives you a list of all the vendors that are included in our database right now that provide these seeds. So theoretically, you could then forward that message off to vendors if you wanna use it today to do this. Uh, we wanna make sure they're all on board with us and make sure we have it set up in the most convenient way for vendors and for users uh, before we actually make it do the real thing. So you can check that out. And actually that's something we could look at when I get to doing the little demo. The way I have it set up right now, uh, it's just a text-based email and uh, it's easy for the vendors just to click reply, uh, plug in their bids and their sources for the seed and then send that to you. And then it's easy for you to then select that response and then paste it into Excel and with a little tweaking, have it all in an Excel spreadsheet. So um, for now, that's the way we got it set and we're gonna see what people think and how it works for people and, and try to make it as good as we can possibly make it. Uh, when you click submit, it will actually give you a thank you screen and then give you the option of being able to go back and work on another project or go back into your custom seed mix page. And like right here, if I click go back, I say, oh no, I didn't really wanna send an email. 
excuse me, that will go back to your custom receipt mix page. Now, if instead you choose to, or when you go back, you could then, another option is to create a printable version of this custom receipt mix and potentially email that to people or keep a copy of it, save an electronic copy of it. When you click on that button, it'll take you to a screen like this that basically lists it out. You can print this and then be able to send that off to vendors through the snail mail if you want. Um, you could also select it on screen, copy it, paste it into Excel, and have an Excel-based version of it so you got an electronic copy of what you've generated. Um, again, go back, we take you back, to your custom meet seed mix page and reset would actually do a reset of any adjustments you went you made to the seeding rates and take you back to the custom seed mix page with that reset. And like I said, step four basically lists the vendors that are participating that we have in our database. And there's quite a list, uh, you know, eight, 10, 12 vendors that are that are, that are included there, and we take a peek at that. We include their contact information, whatever information they have available for us. So, given that, let's give it a try. 